I won't be alone on today's edition of the show. I have with me Ami Chike Chiku, of course, he's the editor of the Niche Newspapers. Thank you very much for joining us on the show. My pleasure. All right, I also have with me the president of the Guild of Public Affairs Analysts of Nigeria, Ayon Vaje. All right, let's kick start today's show now, as of course, within the week on Monday, February 1st, a lot of people were expecting the retirement of the Inspector General of Police, that is Mohamed Adamo, after, of course, serving about 35 years in the police service. But uh, on Monday, while people were waiting and waiting and waiting, there was no uh, more or there was no news from the presidency until at about February 4th we saw uh, a news from the president and of course from the Minister of Police Affairs that is from Mohammed Ngadi Sain and of course it's closing to newsmen that the tenor of the Inspector General of Police Mohammed Adamu has been extended by three months to allow for a, a peaceful transition to the next person and of course for a successful um, selection for a new successor to that post and we will recall that last week after a lot of calls for the retirement and the sack of the service chiefs a day retired and we had new service chiefs in place so a lot of people saw this as a new era a new dawn so for this inspector general of police a lot of people were also expecting the retirement and allowing for the rule of law to take place so what was your view with the extension by three months do you feel it went contrary to the dictates of the constitution after which he had already expired or rather his retirement uh, is already near what's your view on that well it is only obvious that the 1999 constitution, which is the ground norm of the country, yes. as amended, does not envision what President Muhammad Buhari has done with the so-called extension of the tenure of the Inspector General of Police. The Police Act 2020, yes. which the President just signed into law last year, last yes. year, also said it that the tenure of the IG will expire either at the attainment of 65 years of age yeah. or if he puts in 35 years in into the service. Yeah. IGP Adamu was born in 1961. That means he still has about five years going by age. Yes. But on Monday, February 1st, he clocked 35 years in service, service yeah. and therefore going by the dictates of the police act yeah he is no longer a policeman he retires automatically and the 1999 constitution says that the ig must be a serving police officer he did not envisage a situation where a retired police officer is brought back in the from retirement to act for one day, two days, three days. Look, it speaks to the impunity which President Muhammad Buhari has brought to bear on governance in the last in the last now five years. And it is sad because you know the president has taken this to a level where it is as Americans would say in your affairs. What can you do? What is the police minister saying that they are giving him three months so as to prepare and bring in a new IG? Yeah. Did they know that IGP Adamu's tenure will end on February 1st? The answer is no, because since last year, people have been shouting. Ideally, what ought, ought to take place is at about three months before the due date. There should be preparation mm. already for it. You ought to go on pre-retirement leave mm. so that people can step in. In any case, even now that it is like this, the worst case scenario is to there are, IG, there are DIGs there that have about three, four, five, six months now to retire. Yeah. They can step in in, in acting capacity. Mm. why you sort out what you have refused to do in the last one year but to say that 
IGP at that moment must be in office for at least three months for you to do what you ought to have done, what the constitution mandates you to do, is 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 gross indiscipline. Okay, we're still discussing this retirement of the IGP, of which, as said earlier on, the Minister of Police Affairs, Mohamed Ngyadi, has said that they're giving him three months for a sex successful or rather proper selection of a successor for him. And of course, the mission is rightly studied uh, and talking about lack of preparation on the part of the government. Now, of course, to discuss this issue further, joining us on the program is Ifai Nguye. He's a national executive member of the youth party thank you very much for joining us on the show at this time Good afternoon. Now, of course, you heard of the extension of the tenure of the IGP. What exactly is your take on it? Would you say the presidency was not well prepared or they have actually gone out of line of the constitution in extending its tenure or probably it's accepted? Well, I, I think both situations are correct. correct. Because when you talk about extension, the first question that comes to mind is extension pursuant to which law from which section of the constitution does the president purport to draw from the power to extend the tenure of a retiring IG so when you look at section 215 of the constitution it is clear it is unambiguous it is not subject to multiple interpretation it clearly says that the appointment of the IG must be done in collaboration with the police council. Now, the police council has not met since after the retirement or the due date for the retirement of Mr. Adamu. They have not met. So, it is unimaginable that they have given their consent to the presidential appointment. The president does not have the power to appoint the IG alone. So, going by that, it is clearly to state that the president also does not have the unilateral power to extend the extension of the tenor of the IG because both the appointment and the removal of the IG are done upon the advice of the police council. This is the constitution. So what the president has done, or rather, what the president has purported to have done is unconstitutional and it cannot stand. And I think that, you know, the earlier we start taking this issue seriously, you know, the better for us, I mean, in this country, because uh, we can't be encouraging or sitting idle and watching impunity. Then I also agree with uh, what Mr. Ikechku said there earlier, that this also speaks to the lack of fact and preparation on the part of the federal government. It means there is no process. There is no way of um, tracking the tenure of serving officers and knowing when one is due to re retire and putting in place appropriate um, uh, measures and like he rightly also said assuming that you are caught on aware that this IG is retiring and you didn't know you just woke up and you realized that the IG is retiring then what is to be done is to follow the constitution so he retires and you can appoint someone in acting capacity or you can even appoint someone substantively in line uh, with the constitutional provision these things are not rocket science why the IG is working, there should have been a succession plan. So that's where we are. I think the, the appointment cannot stand and uh, it's unconstitutional. You, you've, you've rightly faulted the lack of preparation from the presidency and over time lots of people have also called for restructuring and the police service system. What's your take on that? That is a granted. We cannot because it feeds into the level of insecurity we are experiencing in the country, our current security architecture needs a total overhaul. It needs a total overhaul. And we at the Youth Party, we have not just taken to criticism, we have taken to constructive criticism. That is, we've proffered a solution in the form of our police reform policy that we have put out there, which the uh, SSA to the President has commented on. And when you look at that document, it outlines what needs to be done in practical steps, step by step. First of all, we have to look at um, the benefits of these people that are serving and they are carrying arms. You look at the salary structure, 
which is nothing to write home about. You can't be paying um, someone 9,000 uh, 9, per month and 41,000 Naira per month and you give the person a gun, what about two or 300,000 Naira and you push him uh, into, into the population and you expect that there will be cases of police brutality. You expect that when you, are, you do this, you transfer him from Sokoto to Lagos, no accommodation, he starts his, his own transport, he's going to use that gun, you know, to, to meet the needs of his family. So we have to look at these issues holistically. We have to look at benefit for police officers, which is beyond salary, health care, and all that. We have to look at training. These guys that have, the, because security is very key, if any nation will prosper. If, if I'm going to bring my money into a country, I want to be sure that, you know, things are secure. You can't walk around and, and, and not be afraid of harassment. So we have to look at training. We have to look at the issue of having an effective public, uh, police complaints commission. The new police act of 2020, as I, I tried to address that part of pol pol uh, police public complaint commission, but we are here to see any infrastructure on ground on how these things are to work practically. So a police officer abuses me here in Surulere, who do I talk to? Who do I file my complaint to? I can't talk to his DPO because his DPO is biased. It's his boy. So we have to have a holistic view about these things. And we have a policy document that advises the government on what should be. They can adopt it. Okay, to fine, well, you've already listed out at least some of the things we can look at. You talked about welfare. You talked about the training. And, of course, the public, uh, rather the Police Complaint Commission. Thank you once again for opinion on the show. Thank you. It was a pleasure. All right, that, that was Ifayi Onwe, that's a national executive member of the Youth Party, of course, also raising his calls and, of course, on his views on the tenure extension of Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu. Back in the studio with us, we still have Ayo Baje, the president of the Guild of Public Affairs Analysts of Nigeria. So let's have your own take now. Lack of preparedness on the presidency. What exactly are we to expect? After three months, is there an assurance that we're going to have a new IGP or they're still going to tell us again that they need more time for a proper uh, selection of a successor thank you very much if we look at uh, this topic and any other topic we are going to take uh, a critical look at today yeah there is a connecting court there is an issue that liberates and that issue have you know coined it as personalizing political power mm. when you have a country that uh, has as is Hertzman, the, the number one citizen, Mr. President, that cannot sacrifice itself, the wishes, the caprices for the good of the majority. Problems of this nature keep, uh, you know, cropping up. That's exactly what we are saying. And you look at uh, the situation whereby somebody coming from the background of, uh, you know, military. Yeah. Uh, then that's 83 to 85 and now here you know we've had him since uh, 2015 as you know the president in the democracy mm -hmm. ordinarily in the democracy we expect that somebody that uh, you know holds the reign of power will understand the fact that there should be vision yes. there should be you know uh, teamwork and he should be a very good team leader he should have that capacity to identify the most uh, critical needs of the people and then he must align with constitutional provisions with the statutory you know requirements as enshrined in the constitution for instance what he has done now is a clear violation of sections 18.3 and 18.6 of what of uh, even the police act that yeah. he signed you know <laughs> just back uh, last year so you are asking yourself what is really happening I mean, you understand that the mindset of uh, Mr. President is one that, one, it takes time to uh, come up with uh, uh, critical decisions that mm -hmm. affect the quality of life of uh, Nigerians. He, you know, does not really bother about what people, the implications of what, of his actions. You know, what people will feel and the negative effects this will have on uh, the quality of life of the Human Development Index of Nigerians. This is very, very, you know, serious. I think somebody has gone to court and I think it should be challenged. It's not something that you should allow. 
let me just give you, you an instance. Back in 1976, yeah. I was a final year student at the University of Ibadan at that time. You know, uh, Lee Tai Solan, you know, yeah. of blessed memory. Uh, he was incarcerated because he wanted uh, the military at that time, you know, he had gone to, you know, leave office. So he was kept uh, behind the bars and he returned to Mayflower School in Kenya and he, I mean, after, you know, a few months or so, and he was shot. While he was, uh, you know, he was in detention, the feeling he had was that, ah, uh, I used to do this for Mayflower School. I used to give uh, this command and other. So what will happen in my absence? Well, when he got back, nothing. I mean, things were going on as if it, it didn't even matter. What am I trying to bring out here is this: that you do not give that uh, you know uh, notion that somebody is indispensable. No, in any system, nobody is indispensable. You have a structure in place, and of course, it's very painful that what we are witnessing now mm -hmm. is a reflection of the breakdown the total collapse of all the institutions that we you know one can even talk about as uh, facilitating democracy are you talking about, about the judiciary are you talking about the legislature the legislature that is there this night assembly that is always signing things that you know look at uh, the nepotistic you know appointments that you have across the you know this, this the political spectrum what do you have Things that, should, that are against even the federal character, uh, you know, provision. But you, you still have it. So, we come back again to what? Personalizing political power. PP. So, what, what would so, you expect from the so presidency as a reaction now to this, uh, to this call that they don't want the extension of the tenor? It's a leadership issue. I want the president to know that he cannot be above the law of the land. No. No matter how I mean, well, you, your own and the reason is not justifiable. You know, it's not justifiable. He, I mean, he has said it, and the other man that you you know interviewed, you know, mentioned it. What is expected is that there should be the next person to Adam. Mm -hmm. So let that person step in. We don't give us excuses, and you don't. I mean, were, were they sleeping? Didn't they know a long time ago that this was going to happen? And, and you say, I mean, you look at it again, and you can connect this with uh, the long winding delay before the service things were, you know, <laughs> uh, finally had to go, and then now they are, they are, they are being given an ambassadorial push. It triggers a lot of questions. What is it? The body language of Mr. President shows that there is something fishy, something that we, the ordinary Nigerians, don't know between him and all these people. Mm -hmm. Is it a must? I mean, see, Nigeria is a very complex country, but then the provisions are there. I used to say it over and over again. Section what? 14 subsection 2B of the 1999 Constitution as amended is very, very clear. It's crystal clear. The primary purpose of government, one, is to guarantee security for every citizen. All right. Which means you cannot do that. There's no government. Then the second one is to provide the, for the welfare. So you cannot do that, which means where is the government? I mean, we have got into a state now. I'm somebody that I try to listen to other, you know, uh, sections of the society, yeah. both low and high, to be able to look at the uh, issues in a very dispassionate uh, manner. And I discovered that we, are, we have got into a state of anarchy. All right. Okay. Uh, I think I Raju has listened to his own, and I think a lot of people are expecting so much for the presidency, and of course, to follow the rule of law.